What happens when family business goes bad? There might not be any family in Louisville who knows that better than the people who own the famed Galt House Hotel. WDRB's Travis Ragsdale and Chris Otts untangle the web of the Schneider family feud. When you think of downtown Louisville, what do you imagine? The Yum Center? Waterfront Park? The Sawyer Museum? But all of those places owe a lot of their existence to the Galt House. Fourth and Main is the heart of Louisville, and I think that's what his vision was when he started this. He is Al J. Schneider. Not only did Schneider build the Gaunt House, but he also built the waterfront and riverfront plaza towers, reshaping downtown Louisville as people knew it. But this vast empire needed an heir. Who would take over when Schneider died? He had asked me to take the lead two years prior to his death. Meet Mary Mosley, the fourth of Schneider's six children. When her father died in 2001, she took over as CEO of the Al J. Schneider Company. Here you go. Mosley was also one of five people that her father trusted to control the company. A literal trust, insiders who made decisions on behalf of the much larger Schneider family. But in 2016, the trust ended and long simmering tensions came to a boil. On one side, Mary Mosley and her sister Dawn Hitron, among others. On the other side, Schneider's other surviving children, Christy Coe and Nancy O'Hearn, as well as grandson David Etkin and granddaughter Connie Schilfarth. Mosley's side had planned to sell off company assets, starting with the crown jewel, the Galt House. O'Hearn's side resisted. A nasty family battle over control began. Seven years and millions in legal fees later, <laughs> Mosley and nice. Hitron are walking away, yeah, okay. selling right, their shares the to the other family members. Etkin and O'Hearn's side carrying on the family yeah. business. All the opportunities that we couldn't take advantage of are just there. A settlement, but not a reunion. This is interesting. Mosley and Hitron aren't on speaking terms with some on the other side, and questions over what their father wanted still linger. It was pretty much left up to me on how we wanted to go forward. I mean, he had sold many things in his life. He knew, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't say you have to keep the company because he didn't know what the future was gonna bring. In the litigation, Mosley and Hitron once demanded $45 million each for their stakes in the company. It's unclear how much they actually got. So after all these years, after splitting up a family, was it worth it? The family even disagrees there. I have to say yes. First, okay. first of all, I don't think it was Mr. Schneider's intention for what he had to be liquidated. The way he'd set it up after his death, it was clear that's what he wanted. He wanted it to go on and go on as long as possible. So I think, you know, I think we fought a good fight on his behalf. The litigation should have never happened. It really should not have. I cannot change the way they feel. I've tried um, and uh, I have to go on. And you go, you know, you scratch your head and you go, why did this happen? It didn't have to. Yeah. Hey. Etkin is now chair of the board of directors. O'Hearn has a seat on that board. With the fight behind them, what's next for the Galt House and the Al J. Schneider Company? Well, for one thing, they aren't planning on selling it. Who knows what the future holds yet? We're still feeling, the, feeling our way, feeling the opportunities, feeling the excitement, and uh, that's where we're at. What do you think, Nancy? Well, Daddy was not, my father was not one to sit idle. He was always on the move or thinking about three projects ahead or whatever. So I think we're attuned to doing that too. You know, the ones that want to get back after this is all over with, I, I welcome them with open arms. That may be the toughest battle yet. With photojournalist Darius Bowie, Travis Ragsdale, WDRB News.